proceed further, uh, there is another important concept which uh, needs to be addressed with respect to rotation about a fixed axis, that is namely the angular momentum. So, so we will have this angular momentum, today's topic, in the case of rotation about a fixed axis. So, what are the various things we propose to study today? We will first arrive at an expression for the orbital angular momentum, angular momentum. This is for a symmetric body rotating about a fixed axis. Then we will see that uh, how the principle of conservation of angular momentum uh, looks like and we will consider a couple of examples. Then third thing is uh, uh, rotation, rolling and slipping. These are the various kinds of motions possible for rigid body. We will focus our attention on rotation and rolling. For slipping, maybe we will spend a time later and we will consider few an example. This is what we propose to do. So I have here a diagram. When a rigid body is rotating, this kind of diagram we have seen and uh, this is the center, this is the radius vector, this is with reference to a suitable origin, O, this is the point P, the OP vector is what we call it as the position vector R, okay, and the particle is going round like this, so I can indicate it by this arrow, this is the um, Z axis, I have X axis here, X, Y, Z here, okay. So, um, omega is the angular velocity, let me say, and then M is the mass of the particle, and then uh, here we have, let us say two things, one is uh, uh, the linear velocity, V, M is the mass of the particle, linear velocity. Okay, and uh, angular this uh, angular velocity vector also I need to indicate. Remember, this vector is tangential to the circle, so it is not vertically upwards, even though it looks like this in the diagram. Now, uh, the body is rotating, no? Therefore, it has got an angular velocity omega, and I need to draw a vector here which is the omega vector and this is these two vectors are actually parallel we will see which is not clear here in the diagram so we study the angular momentum in the special case of rotation about a fixed axis so what is the general expression the general expression is little l for a single particle is r crossed with p r crossed with p so, I have R is equal to OP, in this case R is equal to OP vector, that is equal to, OP vector is OC plus CP. OC plus CP and uh, <coughs> uh, where the P is equal to the momentum is what? This is, momentum vector is M times the velocity vector, linear velocity. These things are fairly standard. Okay, now I will calculate the L, angular momentum vector is uh, R is uh, OC plus CP cross um, this with M times V. I need to show the cross, sorry. This is equal to OC crossed with M times V plus CP crossed with M times V. Remember the cross product is distributive. Now CP has got a name. This is what is called as R perpendicular. This we had seen it in earlier lecture. So 
v will be value of v would be velocity linear velocity would here would be r perpendicular times omega therefore i can write now l is equal to oc crossed with m omega m v sorry plus plus cp is r perpendicular r perpendicular squared then i have m then omega what is the direction that is the k direction unit vector k along this so i have here this is equal to i will write this as this is the expression for z component of angular momentum so i will write this l as l sub z plus oc times mv now l z is parallel to the fixed axis now this uh, direction of uh, this direction k can be obtained from this right hand rule also that's how we can get it for that matter now what we have is l z um l z parallel uh, l z is parallel to the fixed axis k but you can't say that l itself is parallel to the um, uh, um, this k unit vector k sorry you should z axis i can't say that this is parallel to unit vector k this is not correct this is right this is wrong okay in general the orbital angular momentum is not along the axis of rotation l and omega need not be parallel in general in general l and omega need not be parallel but in the case of um in the case of uh, an object rotating about a z axis the two for uh, symmetric bodies l and omega are parallel now we will calculate what is total angular momentum this whole body is made up of so many masses therefore total angular momentum is sum of all the angular momenta because angular momenta is a vector quantity the summation runs over i corresponding to all particles so this is l i z is z components of all particles plus sum over o c i crossed with m times v i it is straight forward generalization now we call this quantity l as l i z is the cumulative sum of all the z components this term plus the other term is l perpendicular this is the term so l l perpendicular is the other other quantity which is encircled so what is uh, let me write this l z vector l z is equal to summation over l z this is equal to sum over r i m i r perpendicular i squared times omega k omega is the same for all uh, at mass at every point at every point therefore omega can be taken out so l z is equal to what is this quantity this is the moment of inertia this is the moment of inertia of of the body about this particular axis of rotation 
this is the r perpendicular let me indicate here this is the r perpendicular at this particular point there is a mass mi and its perpendicular distance from here at the distance from c is r perpendicular right therefore this is the i omega times k so this equation is something reminds us a bell should ring in our mind it is something similar to i will write it as uh, p is equal to mv is equal to mv in the case of linear motion so in the case of symmetric rigid bodies what happens is for every for a symmetric rigid body for every uh, oci for every oci uh, for a given oci for every particle which has a velocity vi there is another particle with a velocity minus vi if it is a symmetric body given this oc if there is going to be a velocity in this direction there is going to be another particle which is diametrically opposite at the same distance with a velocity minus vi therefore uh, these two components will cancel so you are left with that uh, l perpendicular is equal to zero so hence we have for a symmetric rigid body rotating about a symmetry axis l z is equal to i omega times k so the axis of rotation is also same as the direction of omega now for objects which are not symmetric about the axis of rotation l is not equal to l z that you must keep in mind and hence does not lie along the axis of rotation in such cases we will consider a few illustrations example 1 let us say that i have a circular disk i have a circular disk it is a circular disk this is the axis of rotation this is the axis of rotation this is z omega and its radius is r so i want to write down what is the orbital what is the angular momentum vector angular momentum vector is equal to yeah this is symmetric body this is the the axis is also symmetric symmetry axis so therefore l is nothing but i omega times k fine yeah now what is the moment of inertia of a circular disk yesterday we had seen mr square by 2 and ang uh, angular velocity is omega this times unit vector which is along the z direction now i can do a slightly different problem example two, one here this is example 2 what i'll do is uh, um in the earlier problem what i have done is i have we have coincided the z axis with the symmetry axis of the body in fact suppose the z axis lies outside and we have the same situation same body okay everything is same it is rotating with omega and these two axes are parallel these two axes are parallel then again l will be equal to now this uh, symmetric rigid body rotating about the symmetry axis therefore its angular momentum is given by i omega times k but only thing is i is different this i is the moment of inertia about the symmetry axis that is mr squared by 2 but 
this is we are calculating with respect to this therefore we want to know the moment of inertia about the symmetry about the z axis therefore this is m d square this is what we call it as parallel axis theorem this is the parallel axis theorem this i will indicate it as uh, parallel axis theorem this times omega times k that's the man so we have got the moment of inertia of this object we will make few comments before we proceed further so l is equal to i omega times k now what is dl by dt dl by dt is equal to i into d omega by dt times k this is equal to d omega by dt is alpha therefore i alpha times k unit vector i alpha yesterday we are seen is nothing but the torque so so now we calculate since l is equal to lz plus l perpendicular so what do we get dl z by dt is equal to tau times k and d l perpendicular by dt is equal to 0 now this gives us to um the principle of conservation of angular momentum the principle of conservation of angular momentum now that, uh, this is generally pcam some abbreviation the total angular momentum of a system is constant if the resultant external torque acting on the system is zero the the total angular momentum of a system of a system is constant in other words it is conserved if the resultant external torque acting on the system system is zero now we are considering with respect to symmetric rigid bodies therefore we have the uh, angular momentum initial angular momentum is same as final angular momentum times wf is equal to constant this is a sort of statement for the angular momentum conservation okay now this conservation of angular momentum is something similar to it should again a bell should ring principle of conservation of linear momentum in the case of linear motion just for comparison purposes i am indicating we will do an illustration of this we will do a problem or illustration now uh, say i have a the situation is like this i have a uh, i have a cylinder i have a cylinder this is the axis of the cylinder this is the axis of the cylinder okay this is the horizontal axis uh, axis of the cylinder 
is horizontal is horizontal now uh, there is a mass there is a bullet which comes and hits it actually the way i have indicated it looks like um, it is a normal this comes m and v not okay so the bullet hits the uh, the, the direction of the bullet is perpendicular to the horizontal axis of the, it meets at a particular distance let us say the distance between these two is d the bullet hits the cylinder at a particular distance d from the axis okay and r is the radius of the cylinder so so i need to say that this is the line of motion the line of motion of the bullet it is perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder even though in the figure it may not be like that that's why i am writing this okay now we uh, various things can be calculated at least we can calculate the angular speed of the system after the projectile strikes and gets embedded on the cylinder initially the cylinder is at rest after the bullet strikes the cylinder the the whole system will begin to rotate we can calculate the angular speed of the entire system so here we can apply uh, the principle of conservation of angular momentum because there are no external torques and uh, um, so before collision before collision so before collision before collision only the bullet has the uh, before collision only bullet uh, only the bullet is moving uh, uh, it has an angular momentum with respect to the axis the before collision only the bullet alone has the angular momentum with respect to the axis of the cylinder and its value is momentum yes and uh, <coughs> angular momentum is l is equal to m into it v not into d okay m v not is the momentum that into the distance now it is directed uh, okay after that after the collision after the collision what is its um, angular momentum its angular momentum is i times omega total angular i times omega what is the i it i is nothing but i of the solid cylinder plus i of the projectile because it the projectile got uh, projectile got itself embedded onto the cylinder and this times omega okay l i i will call it as l i l final therefore now we can equate this to so i have m r squared by 2 solid cylinder is mr square by 2 is the moment of inertia plus after it got embedded on the surface the mass of the bullet is m as we said it it is as a distance of uh, r it got embedded on the surface mr square times omega this is equal to initial angular momentum initial angular momentum is m into v not into d that corresponding to only that of the bullet therefore this implies omega is equal to m v not d divided by 
m r squared by 2 plus little m r squared. In fact, this expression can be made use of to find the velocities of a bullet because the bullet will whiz fast very fast. So once you make this bullet hit a cylinder, get it embedded on the surface, that is important. It has to get embedded on the surface. Then we can measure the omega through that we can measure the value of V0. Okay. We will consider one more illustration, one more example. Uh, the situation is like this. I have a circular disc. Okay. This circular disc it has got an axis and um, it is pivoted. So the disc can rotate about this axis. About this axis. It is pivoted. So this is and the mass of the entire disk is m and r is the radius. The center we will call it as c. Now, as it is rotating with a constant angular velocity omega, here we have a mass little m and it begins to roll towards the center and reaches a particular point, let us say c, such that OC is equal to X. As it moves along, what we are uh, uh, the question is there is a point C it has to cross. So we want we, we want you to calculate the um, we want <coughs> so calculate omega calculate omega question what is this, uh, calculate omega when it is uh, when the little mass reaches C. That is the thing. Initial omega, initial value of angular velocity is omega. As the this m is uh, considerably heavy, it is not negligible compared to m. Therefore, as this mass moves towards O, the whole angular velocity will change. Now let us see what happens to this. So this is a circular platform. I will call it as CP circular platform. Let me repeat the problem. There is a circular platform of a mass m of radius r which is pivoted about a particular point O, which is rotating about an axis with angular velocity, constant angular velocity omega. A, a mass small m, it begins to move towards the center. Initially, it is at the rim of this uh, circular platform. You are required to calculate the angular velocity of the entire object when it reaches C. That is the question. Now, uh, again there are no external torques, therefore the uh, <coughs> angular momentum, uh, orbital angular momentum, sorry, initial is equal to orbital angular momentum later, uh, angular momentum at later at some instant of time. Now, first let us calculate what is the we need to make use of the formula L is equal to I times omega. Right? So we need to know what is the initial moment of inertia of the system. Initial moment of the system is I of Cp plus I of mass. This is equal to the circular disk therefore mr square by 2 Cp is the circular platform plus little m into r square. In the beginning. Now, IF is equal to, again the same thing, this is equal to M R squared by 2. But now, the, uh, the mass is at the point C, which is at the distance X, therefore, M into X squared. Now, I am going to make use of the principle of conservation of angular momentum which says moment of inertia initial times omega sub i is equal to moment of inertia times later omega sub f right so 
we equate these two and uh, we can uh, so mr squared by 2 plus mr squared into omega is equal to mr squared by 2 plus m x squared times omega at c therefore omega at c when it, uh, omega at c means the uh, angular velocity of entire system when the mass is at c okay is equal to mr uh, let me write this in a little neat way mr square by 2 plus little mr squared divided by mr squared by 2 plus little m x squared times omega okay now it is clear that omega c is equal to this omega c is greater than omega that is because look at this numerator and denominator the denominator you are uh, having a smaller quantity x square here therefore omega c is go going to be greater than omega what does it mean it implies that the rotational kinetic energy at c is greater than rotational kinetic energy initially that means as the little as this uh, mass little m moves towards the center the kinetic energy of the entire system is increasing how does this happen it happens because it happens because now if this uh, as the mass m moves towards o in order to keep itself in a position it should apply there should be a centripetal force it has to do work to uh, create centripetal force therefore energy is given to the system the kinetic energy is the uh, some uh, energy is given to the system therefore the kinetic energy of the system increases one can calculate what is the amount what is the increase in kinetic energy this can be calculated because the expression is uh, uh, half i we know what is the kinetic energy initially half i omega i squared we are calculating what is omega c therefore again uh, we can calculate the kinetic energy calculate the difference and right actually uh, this work done as this uh, body moves along it's transferred to the internal energy of the system right now we will move on to the next topic next topic is next topic is rolling i uh, will call it as rotation rolling and slipping No, I will give a little bit of motivation for this. The motivation is like this. I have a table top, let us say. What I do is, I have a disc which is rotating about its axis with some angular momentum, omega naught. I am having a disc which is uh, rotating about its axis with angular momentum, omega naught. And I place it gently. The disc is the rotating disc. Is placed gently. The 
rotating disc is placed gently gently on the table let us say it's a perfectly frictionless frictionless table right now i will consider this point as a this point as b this as i will consider some point here which is c from the center okay so let us say that oc is equal to r by 2 what is happening what is the linear velocity at a linear velocity at a is r omega and radius is r therefore r times omega not what is the linear velocity at b linear velocity at b is equal to r times omega not what is the linear velocity at c again whatever is the radius radius is r by 2 and omega not remains the same why are we giving this example sir it is just to show that because the table is frictionless and the disc is rotating with an angular velocity if it is placed on it it is placed on the the rotating disc is uh, vertically placed on the table very gently very gently means that no push or anything slipping uh, no push or anything then what happens is that um, uh, when you calculate the linear velocities at various points these are the values okay now the question is it will the disk will only rotate disk one disk only rotates now the question is will it roll no it will not roll it will not roll if you place a rotating disc vertically on a perfectly frictionless table the disc will not roll this is the point which i want to stress here and okay now we will consider a uh, rolling motion what is actually a rolling motion a rolling motion is a disc will rotate about an axis and also it will move forward something like uh, when you cycle or any two wheeler the wheels will rotate about the axis and also the wheels will move forward and so there is a translational motion as well as rotational motion now i will draw the axis this point i will call it as p1 this i will consider as p0 this is uh, center i will call it as c okay now the whole thing is rotating angular velocity is omega not so at this particular point what is the linear velocity linear velocity is v1 right right uh here it will be in this direction now suppose i take any point here let us say i'll take a point uh, here first thing is this, this will have a center of mass this particular point will have a cent, uh, velocity vcm at the center it will move because it is rolling as well as rotating there is a translational motion therefore the center of mass will have a velocity which i'll call it as vcm i am not writing the vector so that it will get cluttered but otherwise it's a vector quantity direction is indicated here and when i take a particular point here what happens and now to find the velocity here i should join these two okay this particular point will have a center of mass uh, this will have a same cm right and now what i should do is uh, i should uh, <clears throat> there is going to be a this this i will call it as rp then this is how it will have 
uh, I will call it as this quantity will be the linear velocity this linear velocity at uh, P this is the linear velocity vector so the net resultant is going to be I need to compound these two right which I am not indicating it over here so if you want I can do it here this this uh, this portion alone I amplify it here this is VCM I'm magnifying it rather and then uh, this is VP linear velocity so I can uh, I can complete this is what is going to be the um, actual velocity at this particular point okay this is P I am magnifying this portion alone here right at P naught at uh, at VP naught at P naught at P naught what will happen due to rotation it is exactly same as VP naught but uh, so VP naught at this particular point its linear velocity must be same as P center of mass in other words when the center of mass motion is like this here it will have motion and then uh, its linear velocity will be here both of them should be equal this is what is equal to R omega naught so there is no uh, at this particular point P naught when it is rolling it should be at instantaneous rest that is what you call it P naught is at instantaneous rest why it is at instantaneous rest that is because its linear velocity should match the velocity of the center of mass okay so we call it as VCM velocity of the center of mass should be same as R omega naught if this happens as long as this is maintained this is the condition for rolling without slipping condition for rolling without slipping okay no. what about the instantaneous um, <coughs> what about at uh, p1 p at p1 is equal to velocity of center of mass plus r omega therefore this will be equal to 2 times v of cm this is again for rolling right ok it will have a center of mass velocity as well as the linear velocity and then the uh, and the linear velocity is same as r omega naught therefore it is twice v cm now we will uh, derive an expression for the kinetic energy of a rolling motion so kinetic energy of rolling motion k is equal to kinetic energy of a rolling body of a rolling body is so remember a rolling body has kinetic energy of translation plus kinetic energy of rotation see you people uh, students uh, should clearly distinguish between rotation about an axis the translation about an axis both put together is what is known as uh, the rolling motion of a body right so earlier we had seen uh, now we want to recall uh, recollect something therefore I will draw in a different colored uh, uh, earlier we had seen a kinetic energy 
of a system of particles i think uh, it is in lecture 2 of, i guess as soon as we introduced the center of mass this we did as a, in fact we did a two body problem so kinetic energy of a system of particles is equal to kinetic energy of the center of mass plus kinetic energy of rotational motion about the center of mass that is important this we had done so in the same way the same way we have so the kinetic energy is equal to of a, what we are rolling body is equal to first translational motion if the mass is m p c m squared plus the kinetic energy of the rotational motion about the center of mass this is half i omega squared right and uh, moment of inertia is also written in terms of mk squared uh, let me use uh, a little m mk squared where k is the radius of gyration okay which you had seen earlier now k is equal to half m k squared m k squared v c m squared by r squared well, how do i write it that is because p of center of mass is equal to r omega condition for rolling so this plus translational motion energy for the kinetic energy of translational motion v of cm squared therefore k is equal to half little m v cm squared 1 plus k squared by r squared this is a very standard formula okay it's a very standard formula in that so what is that we have done the kinetic energy of a um, rolling body so we have made use of what we have done is uh, the ke of of a rolling body a rolling body is equal to kinetic energy of translation plus kinetic energy of rotation okay this is something similar to this is nothing but what we already have done for the case of many particles both are actually the same we got an expression for the kinetic energy now we can make use of this expression time rika sir no 2 minutes 2 minutes in fact now we can make use of this expression to um, uh, do a simple problem it is like this 
what we have is I have an inclined plane I have an inclined plane I have an object it may be sphere or a cylinder or circular disk it begins to roll it rolls down so I have a ring and a solid cylinder and a sphere okay now at this point this uh, whatever it is if it is the, uh, let us say it is a ring or a solid cylinder or a sphere the object will have only potential energy when it comes here it will have only kinetic energy therefore mg h is equal to expression for kinetic energy is mv squared by 2 v is the center of mass of course 1 plus k squared by r squared we have just derived it right suppose it's a now we will have a small table now it is object so number pandil editing la paathukalam okay sir even if it is little more this object first i will have a circular ring what is its k value radius of gyration it's a circular ring or a disk it is only uh, 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 sorry circular ring is r so I will put this expression here and calculate what is V. I will get from this implies V is equal to 2GH by 1 plus K squared by R squared square root. So this will be GH because k is equal to r so 2 and 2 will get cancelled this is what we will have for a circular ring in the case of a uh, circular disk in case of a circular disk this is um, this is r by root 2 therefore it will have 4 by 3 It has higher value than this. Next, we have a sphere, solid sphere. It is root 2 by 5 r. <coughs> Radius of gyration is root 2 by square root of 2 by 5 times r. Then it will be 10 by g gh. So you realize that uh, even though all these objects, ring or a solid cylinder sphere have the same radius r, same, all of them they have the same radius, you will find that the solid sphere when it comes to the bottom, it will have the maximum, it will have the greatest velocity, greatest velocity is for the solid sphere. Therefore, greatest kinetic energy.